They called it the fighter that would rule the skies for the next 50 years. A technological masterpiece that would make every other jet obsolete. But 20 years later, that same jet has become a cautionary tale. Because while America spent over a trillion dollars trying to perfect the F-35, Sweden quietly built a better answer, for a fraction of the price. And now, after a series of joint tests and simulations, the Gripen E has exposed a brutal truth the Pentagon can't ignore. The F-35 program might have been a costly error. In modern warfare, air superiority is everything. The nation that owns the sky owns the fight. So when the United States promised the F-35 would be the ultimate multi-role fighter, stealthy, digital, unstoppable, the world believed it. It was supposed to be the smartphone of the skies, one jet that could do everything, dogfight, strike, spy, and survive. But as the years dragged on, the costs climbed higher, and the promises started to crack. The U.S. had built an aircraft so complex that it struggled to function without a massive ecosystem around it. Advanced data links, specialized bases, hundreds of maintenance crews, and constant software updates. It could destroy targets from miles away, sure, but only if every system worked perfectly in sync. And in war, perfection is the first casualty. Meanwhile, thousands of miles away, a country with no global ambitions, no massive defense budget, and no stealth obsession took a very different path. Sweden. While the US chased supremacy, Sweden chased survival. Its engineers at Saab asked a deceptively simple question. What if a fighter didn't need billions in logistics, just a pilot and a stretch of highway? That question gave birth to the Gripen E, a jet built not to impress, but to endure. It doesn't need a hangar or an army of technicians. It can land on a country road, refuel in 10 minutes, and take off again. Its radar and sensors aren't just good, they're smart, and its entire software architecture can be rewritten overnight by its own Air Force, not a defense contractor months later. Where the F-35 demanded a global supply chain, the Gripen demanded intelligence. Where the F-35 drained budgets, the Gripen multiplied possibilities. But in the early days, few took Sweden seriously. Experts mocked it as a cheap European jet. They said it couldn't match stealth or raw power. The Gripen wasn't designed for dominance. It was designed for resilience. And that didn't make headlines. Until, of course, it started outperforming the world's most expensive aircraft in exercise after exercise. The turning point came during NATO combat simulations. In one scenario, the Gripen E and the F-35 faced off under electronic warfare conditions, radar jamming, communication blackouts, GPS interference. The F-35, heavily dependent on digital networks and data links, began to lose its edge. Its stealth couldn't hide it forever, and without clean data, it struggled to coordinate. The Gripen E, however, thrived in the chaos. Its Arexis Electronic Warfare Suite, developed with modular algorithms, adapted in real time. It jammed, spoofed, and redirected threats without breaking stride. When the mock battle ended, the Gripen pilots had killed their targets before the F-35 even saw them. No stealth coding, no trillion-dollar infrastructure, just speed, brains, and adaptability. That was the moment defense analysts began whispering what no one wanted to say out loud. The F-35 wasn't failing because it was weak. It was failing because it was too strong for its own good. It tried to be invisible, digital, omnipotent, and ended up fragile. The Gripen E, by contrast, was brutally practical. It didn't try to outstealth the enemy, it outthought them. It used electronic warfare as camouflage, data fusion as its weapon, and simplicity as its shield. And in the age of cyber warfare and unpredictable battlefields, simplicity suddenly looked like genius. Let's put this in perspective. One F-35A costs roughly $80 million to buy, but nearly double that to operate over its lifetime. Its maintenance hours per flight are staggering. Every sortie requires logistical ballet between engineers, software updates, and diagnostics. A Gripen E, meanwhile, costs roughly half as much, and can be serviced by a team of six in less than an hour. Its entire airframe is designed around modularity, remove, replace, fly. 
In a prolonged war, that difference isn't just financial, it's existential. Because the side that can get its jets back into the sky faster, wins. Now, imagine you're a small nation trying to modernize your air force. Do you spend billions on a fighter that needs custom hangars, American technicians, and constant maintenance? Or do you buy a jet that you can fix yourself? One that's interoperable with NATO, but truly independent? Countries like Brazil, the Czech Republic, and Thailand have already answered that question. They chose the Gripen. Not because it's the flashiest, but because it works. And in today's world, works is worth more than wows. Behind closed doors, even NATO planners have started re-evaluating their air doctrines because the Gripen E's latest data link technology allows it to network with other jets, including the F-35, faster and more securely than many legacy systems. In a mixed fleet, the Gripen can actually enhance the effectiveness of stealth fighters by feeding them real-time threat data from different angles. Ironically, the budget jet has become the brain of the battlefield. It coordinates, communicates, and confuses all at once. And the Pentagon knows it. Reports from European exercises quietly acknowledge the Gripen's advantage in sortie rates, electronic resilience, and cost efficiency. But admitting that publicly would mean accepting a harsh truth, that the F-35 program, for all its ambition, might have gone too far, too fast. The F-35 was supposed to be the symbol of American air dominance. Instead, it's become a symbol of excess, of what happens when innovation forgets practicality. It's not a bad jet. It's an extraordinary one. But it's trapped in its own brilliance. It's too expensive to lose, too complicated to fix, and too valuable to risk. The Gripen E, on the other hand, is the jet that dares to be used. It's meant to fight, fail, adapt, and fly again all in the same day. It's the fighter built for the real world, not the PowerPoint slides. What makes this story truly fascinating isn't just technology, it's philosophy. The United States builds weapons to project power, Sweden builds weapons to survive it. One seeks dominance, the other seeks freedom. And when you put those two philosophies head to head, the results speak for themselves. The F-35 represents what happens when you throw money at complexity. The Gripen represents what happens when you throw creativity at necessity. And in 2025, it's clearer than ever which one the world actually needs. Around the globe, air forces are quietly shifting priorities. The next generation of fighters won't just be about stealth and speed. They'll be about flexibility, autonomy, and cost-effective readiness. The Gripen E embodies that future. It's teaching the world a lesson the Pentagon forgot. You don't win wars with the most expensive jet. You win them with the most available one. Because when your skies are threatened, it doesn't matter how advanced your aircraft is. If it's still in the hangar waiting for software updates. And that's why the Gripen E didn't just challenge the F-35. It exposed it. It showed that power without practicality is just theater. That innovation without restraint becomes waste. The F-35 may dominate headlines, but the Gripen dominates logic. It's the fighter that redefined efficiency, proved adaptability, and reminded the world that intelligence, not extravagance, wins battles. The US built the most expensive fighter in history. Sweden built the most efficient. And now, the world finally sees which one truly owns the future of the skies.